Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com. Today we're taking a closer look at installing and listening to the Flowmaster Outlaw Series Catback Exhaust with Black Carbon Fiber Tips, available for all 2018 and newer Mustang GTs without active exhaust. Like you heard from our sound clips a minute ago, this guy is gonna get five out of five on our loudness meter. It's exactly what we expect from a Flowmaster Outlaw. They're known to be extremely loud systems in the category. The Outlaw is essentially a straight pipe, so that's really gonna contribute to the sound you just heard. It's loud, it's raspy, and it can be ear piercing at wide open throttle. If you're looking for all out volume, this is a great way to go. It's got a Resonator Delete Flowmaster Scavenger X pipe, which is gonna help boost airflow efficiency. It's gonna give you a small bump in power, and it's gonna give you a louder raspier tone than a Resonator or even an H pipe. The rest of the kit here is 409 stainless steel, the middle of the road quality materials, aluminized 409 and then 304 being top quality. So it is gonna be more corrosion and rust resistant than aluminized, but maybe not so much as 304. And that's gonna be reflective in the price tag. A lot of the 304s come in around 1600 bucks. This guy's coming in around 1200 bucks. So it's great for the guys looking to save on a full catback system. The mufflers back to the tips are powder coated in black to even boost its durability there. Now the rest of the system also is three inch mandrel bent tubing, three inches larger in diameter, and it's also mandrel bent to help reduce any kinks and airflow restrictions. The tips here are black carbon fiber. Now not everybody likes carbon fiber, so if you're not really interested in that, there's a ton of other color options in the category available for you. Carbon fiber is very unique looking. I think it blends in really well with this rear valance. I actually really like it against our orange Fury 19 here as well. Now these sleeves are essentially bolted to the actual materials here. The bolts are not very obvious, they're really subtle, uh, which is not something you can say for some of the other brands in the category, so I do like that. It's got double walled fitment around the edges here, so it's nice and thick, really aggressive looking. Personally, I think it looks pretty good. The tips are angled a little bit. Not everybody would like that. Not all the systems are like that as well, so something to keep in mind. I personally think it looks pretty aggressive. The install is gonna get three out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. It does require cutting and some specialty tools. Now the cutting is fairly simple. I'm gonna walk you through that process. Essentially, we're gonna unbolt the entire factory cat back in one piece and then just cut off the remaining pipe right behind the factory catalytic converters. So it is reusing those factory cats. Now that I'm gonna use a Sawzall for. I'm also gonna use a die grinder just to clean up the cuts and then we'll bolt up the new system right from there. I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. It'll take you about three hours from start to finish. Let's get started. Tools used in this install include an impact gun, 3 8 ratchet, an extension, short and deep 13 millimeter sockets, 15 millimeter deep socket, tape measure, Sharpie, a die grinder or something similar to clean up or deburr the exhaust cuts, Sawzall with a thin kerf metal blade, WD-40 or something similar, and a mallet. All right guys, once you have your Mustang up in the air and supported properly, whether it be on jack stands or on a lift like we have here, you wanna grab an impact gun or a ratchet and a 15 millimeter deep socket, and we're gonna loosen up the two band clamps holding on your factory cat back to the catalytic converter pipes. Now you'll see that right in front of the factory resonator. There's two nuts here and two nuts there. You don't have to completely remove them, just get them nice and loose. All right, the next step, we're gonna move back toward the rear of our vehicle, right under the rear subframe. Now, if you look at your rear sway bar, straight past them are two hangers where your exhaust is hooked on and bolted to that subframe using two 13 millimeter bolts. From here, instead of trying to slide our hangers out of the isolators, I'm actually just gonna completely unbolt the isolators to make life a lot easier. So grab an extension and a 13 millimeter deep socket. And what I like to do is go straight over the sway bar and remove those two bolts.
All right, now what I like to do after the bolts are removed is we have to unclip the isolator from the frame. They're still hooked in there. So what you're basically gonna do is lift up on them so they disconnect and rotate them down and out of the way. All right, our next step here is to get our entire factory cat back off of the vehicle. We're gonna start up here with our resonator right in front of those. I'm gonna tap out the factory band clamps. I got my buddy Stan helping me get this thing down. If you're working on the ground, you may be able to do it by yourself, but if you're in the air, you might want a helping hand. All right, so now we should slide them out of the hangers at the tips and they should come free. Good. So we got your factory exhaust off of our 19 GT and we have it on the ground next to our Flowmaster Outlaw. Let's talk about some similarities and differences between the two kits, starting at the front of the vehicle. Now the factory system has this resonator mid pipe. Your Flowmaster Outlaw is a resonator delete. It also has the Scavenger X pipe from Flowmaster, which is gonna help promote a better airflow. It's gonna help promote more air coming in and overall that's gonna translate to a better power gain. Now, as you can see, it is laid out a little bit differently than your factory exhaust here. It splits out a lot wider than the factory. That's because we do have to cut those excess pipes right under the factory catalytic converters, which we'll get to in just a minute. Do know that the entire system here is 409 stainless steel, so it's the middle of the road when it comes to quality. There's the aluminized 409 and then the more expensive 304 stainless. 409 is gonna be a little bit more corrosion and rust resistant than aluminized steel, so it is a good way to keep costs down while still getting a better quality construction. If you're located in wintry weather areas, like I said earlier, seeing a lot of road salt, things like that, 409 is gonna hold up a little bit longer than aluminized, maybe not as long as 304, something to keep in mind. The system here is a three inch mandrel bent tubing. It's a little bit larger in diameter than the factory, which is about 2.75 inches. So you're getting a lot more volume of airflow moving through too, which can help with power. Moving on, you can see the rest of the kit here looks very similar. The bigger difference here comes in at the mufflers. Your factory mufflers are pretty big, lots of baffling, keeps drone down, but it's also minimizing a lot of that sound. If you're looking for sound, the Flowmaster Outlaw is essentially a straight pipe. It has these very, very small bullet style mufflers, which has very little to no baffling on the inside, making it that straight through technology, which is essentially just gonna make all out noise. And that's what we heard from our sound clip too. Now, because of that and the fact that there is no resonator, the essential straight pipe design here is gonna produce some drone inside the cabin. That's just something you can expect with what is essentially the straight pipe. So we know that the factory muffler is giant in comparison. It's got a lot of baffling on the inside to help keep drone down while also making sure that it is aggressive, but it does affect volume. If you're looking for all out volume, I can't think of anything more raspy and obnoxious and loud and aggressive and in your face than a straight through pipe design, which is essentially what you're getting with the Flowmaster Outlaw. The baffling here on the inside of these bullet style mufflers are virtually non-existent. There's very little to no baffling in there, which is gonna help produce a lot of volume and a little bit more rasp than you get with some of the other options. As a result of essentially a straight pipe, you are gonna get some drone inside the cabin, but if you're looking for all out noise and that's what you want, you definitely get that here. The black powder coating, as you can see, is only on the muffler and right next to the tips there. The powder coating is gonna beef up the corrosion and rust resistance at this section. A hole in your muffler, a rust in your muffler can drastically affect sound of an exhaust. So having those a little bit more protected than the rest of the system does make a little sense, which is something that you'll see here in the Flowmaster kit. The black powder coating is gonna hold up over time and it's gonna hold up with the exhaust heat as well. Exiting out the rear, it is essentially a black carbon fiber tip, which is a nice sleeve bolted to the bare exhaust material. It's about four inches in diameter as opposed to your factory three inch. It's not slash cut as deep as the factory exhaust. It's a little bit more evened out, but it does have a slight angle to it. It's a lot thicker and more aggressive looking, and it has that slightly exotic feel to it with the carbon fiber finish. And finally, the Flowmaster name there in a grayish, what looks more like a frosted color. Now there is a couple of things we need to do in preparation for install. We are gonna have to swap over the factory hanger isolators as you see here, and we'll put them on our new hangers on the Flowmaster kit. So what do you say we get started? Now when it comes to swapping over these hanger isolators, I do find it easier to use PB Blaster and just lubricate the inside there because it can get a little tough to get off. So if we just hit both sides here on the inside, it'll make life a little easier for us. And I'll work this guy around. As you can see, it slides right off. Now swapping these over to the Flowmaster kit, you'll notice the first thing is that the hangers are facing the opposite direction. That's okay, that's how the Flowmaster kit is built. What matters is the way that the hanger isolator is facing. Take note of this tab at the top. 
make sure that is facing the front of the vehicle, so opposite side of the tips. We'll slide that on, and just rotate it down and out of the way. Same thing on the other guy. Take the tab, face it the opposite direction of the hangers, and now we can move on. All right, with the factory cat back out of the way, the next step here is to measure in preparation for our cut. Now we do have to cut off these extension pipes right behind the factory catalytic converters. This system does reuse the factory cats, so we're gonna measure 11 inches from the base weld of the catalytic converter back into the piping. I'm gonna mark that with a Sharpie. I'm gonna double check that to make sure it's good. Always measure twice, cut once. Once we have that determined, we'll be able to cut this pipe off. So we're really cutting off about this much, but it is necessary. So grab your measuring tape, measure from the back here, 11 inches, and we're gonna make our mark. All right, now when I say measure from the base weld, that's not this guy here, it's the base of the cat. So this weld here at the bottom of it, I'm gonna measure right from the bottom, out 11 inches. Grab my Sharpie. So 11 inches is gonna be right about here. That's gonna be where we make our cut. Now, like I said, measure twice, just to make sure you have it right. 11 inches. Now I'm gonna measure on the other side, and then we can cut. Now looking at the other side, you'll notice that there's a clamp. This pipe here is clamped on separately. In theory, we could just remove that and be okay. This marker here is actually 11 inches. So let me show you that right now. So I'm measuring from the base. You can see 11 actually ends right where this pipe ends. You can't just remove that. We do still have to cut. If we just remove the piping, there'd be about two to three extra inches of pipe that we don't want there. So we do still need to cut right at that line. So I'm not even gonna use my Sharpie. I'm just gonna use the end of that pipe as a reference. All right, so I'm gonna make this cut using a Sawzall and a thin kerf metal blade. You wanna make sure when you're cutting you are using a metal blade. I'm also gonna wear safety glasses. Of course, you wanna be safe when you're doing this, so don't forget that step. Now, keep in mind, we are very close to the vehicle's floorboard. You don't wanna push this all the way up because then our blade is just jabbing right into the floorboard, which obviously is not something we want. We don't wanna cause damage to anything else. So I am gonna to have to pull back a little and uh, let's just cut this off. And as you can see, once I cut it, this pipe is gonna fall, so just keep that in mind. If you're working on the ground, just stay out of your way, make sure that doesn't fall on you. All right, so we have that off. I'm gonna take a die grinder and I'm gonna just deburr that to make sure it's a smooth surface. All right, so now, again, we're just repeating on the other side and I'm using the end of this pipe as a reference since that is our 11 inch mark. All right, so now I'm gonna use my die grinder, my air tool here. It's got some fine tooth sandpaper on it. So I'm just gonna clean up the edges here, make sure it's ready for our install. Now we can start installing. Next up, grab your Scavenger X-Pipe from Flowmaster. Put your smaller two and a half inch clamps over the sides. We're gonna insert that into the pipes that we just cut. All right, so we do want this to seat back a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is take my mallet, I'm gonna tap right here, get this guy to push right back in. Grab your 15 millimeter socket, rotate the clamps into position, and tighten them down. Now our next pipe here, I'm gonna start on our driver's side. We have one of the larger clamps over the end, the three inch clamp, where it has the slit. That'll go into the X pipe. 
You wanna make sure you're picking the pipe here that has a sharper bend and a shorter ending. There's one with a longer side, that's gonna be your passenger. So I'm gonna slide this guy into position. All right, now I'm gonna tighten up this clamp, get it nice and snug. Now when I do this, I wanna leave a little bit of room for adjustment, so I am just gonna get it snug, not too tight. All right, so now we can still rotate it if we need to. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, now before we move on to installing the tips and the tailpipes with the muffler, I'm actually gonna unbolt the factory isolator that our tailpipe tip hanger would hook into. These are two 13 millimeter bolts, one's facing straight down, one's facing the side. I'm gonna use an impact gun for the bottom one. Now for the side, I'm gonna switch over to a ratchet and get that other guy off. This will make life a lot easier for installing our tailpipes. So I have a 3 8 ratchet and a 13 millimeter short socket to get the side guy off. So now looking at our passenger side tip, I'm gonna slide this guy on in the same direction. I'm gonna let it dangle for now. We can install this whole pipe assembly and then hook this guy back up to the frame. All right, now with the clamp in position, I'm gonna hook the pipes together and then we're gonna bring this whole assembly up to hook it into our subframe. All right, so what you'll see us do is rotate this hanger up and reconnect it to our subframe. I've got that factory 13 millimeter bolt for this isolator. I'm gonna put that guy in just hand tight for now. We'll come back and tighten it down once everything's hooked up. Now what we're gonna do is lift the whole tailpipe assembly up and I'm gonna put the factory 13 millimeter bolt back in. That actually hooks right back in as well. Put the bottom one in, tighten them down, and then our clamp. Now I'm gonna use my impact gun and the 13 deep socket to tighten down the bottom one and my ratchet for the top one. All right, so now we're coming back to this clamp that connected our tailpipe to the rest of the system. I'm just gonna get it nice and snug. I still wanna leave room for adjustment. All right, so now we're just repeating for the other side. We're gonna remove this isolator and repeat that process. All right, now we can install our tailpipe. So now I'm gonna put that factory 13 millimeter bolt in position on the subframe, just hand tight for now. All right, so now I'm gonna rotate the tip hanger isolator uh, assembly up into the frame, hang it up, and put our bolts through. All right, back at our tailpipe clamp, we're just gonna get it nice and snug. Now we can tighten up the 13 millimeter bolts holding the hangers to the subframe. All right, so at this point we have everything installed. And as you can see, the tips do need a little bit of an adjusting. So what we're gonna do is go back and tighten down all of our clamps, making sure that it's aligned as we do so. And then we'll be good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the Flowmaster Outlaw Series Catback Exhaust with black carbon fiber tips. Available for the 18 and newer Mustang GT without active exhaust. You can pick yours up right here at AmericanMuscle.com.